I'm Amy Spurway, and I am author of the book Crow. Crow is nominated for two Atlantic Book Awards this year. It's nominated for the Jim Connors Dartmouth Book Award and the Margaret and John Savage First Book Award. So I'm going to do a little reading for you to give you a little taste of what this story is all about. The first chapter, which I'll read from, is called the dirt. I come from a long line of lunatics and criminals. Crazies on one side of the family tree, crooks on the other, although the odd crazy has a touch of crook and vice versa. I am the weary, bitter fruit, or perhaps the last nut, of this rotten old hybrid with its twisted roots sunk deep in dysfunctional soil. Some even call it cursed, this family tree of mine. But if you ask me, that's all a pile of superstitious bullshit. Like I said, we're just a bunch of lunatics and criminals. Get your bony arse out of bed before I kick it out. Mama clomps into my room at the crack of dawn, thumping a laundry basket full of wet clothes down at the foot of my bed and flinging the window wide open like some kind of sunrise-loving lunatic, threatening to kick my arse like a criminal alarm clock with big flat feet. My mother... Effie Fortune, is the sanest, straightest one of the bunch. After all these years, I realize that threatening to kick my bony arse out of bed is her way of saying, I love you. Mama's the reason I came home to Cape Breton. Not that I had much choice. I want to tell her that I had that same nightmare again, the one with the flock of birds that laugh at me and the tree that uproots itself to chase me across a swath of black and barren land. The monster branches grab me when I stumble and squeeze the life out of me while the birds all fly around cackling. The first time I had that bad dream was one week ago when I still lived in Toronto. I woke up gasping and retching and then I vomited all over my bed. Both of my arms dead as doorknobs, my head pounding and my eyes unable to focus. It took me almost an hour to pull myself together enough to clean up the mess. In the end, I biffed the creamy satin bedding in the dumpster out behind my condo because I couldn't stomach trying to wash it. Puke-covered designer sheets chucked in a dumpster. Of all the genuinely sad and jarring circumstances of late, that one foolish detail was somehow the final straw. I called Mama that night to say I was coming home. So here I am. When I try to speak now, all that comes out is a low groan, which Mama takes as the kind of willfully inarticulate protest she would have got from me when I last lived here as a lazy, melodramatic 18-year-old. You've been laying in that bed since you got here. Damn near a day and a half. It's no good for you. And that laundry won't hang itself. She shoves the basket closer to my bed with her size nine clod hopper. Again, I open my mouth to say something, but Mama's already hustling out the door and down the hall before any words make it out. That's all right. I didn't come here to argue with my mother, even though a vestige of my saucy teenage self is alive and well and on familiar turf. I came here so Mama could take care of me, so I could gather the strands of my life together and weave them into some kind of coherent story about who I was and where I came from before it's too late, before I forget before I'm just a memory here. See, I'm dying. But where are my manners? We haven't even been properly introduced. Just let me pull on my fancy pants, flatten my hair, and slide into my smooth, persuasive, multi-level marketing expert voice. Good day. I'm Stacy Fortune, former manager of marketing communications for the Canadian division of Viva Rica, the essence of inspiration. What's that, you ask? Viva Rica is a carefully crafted and ludicrously expensive blend of 18 essential superfood extracts that supports and stimulates the flow of health and wealth to a handful of folks at the top of a company pyramid by pushing highly sophisticated 21st century brainwashing sales and recruitment bullshit through a dedicated network of wishful thinking super juice junkies. We'd be proud to have you and 20 of your closest friends join our rapidly growing global distribution family. The greatest journey starts with one small sip, 
That's the kind of marketing prowess that could have earned me the prestigious Viva Rica Juicy Details Award, which recognizes excellence in convincing desperate people that pawning off crates of $50 a bottle blueberry juice on their friends and family is their ticket to entrepreneurial bliss. Unfortunately, I lacked the kind of bubbly ambition that would have helped me float all the way to the top of the Viva Rica pyramid. Probably because I didn't drink enough super juice. It gave me gut rot. How about an introduction that's a little more down to earth? One where my pants are clean, but not fancy. My hair is only a tad ratty, and my voice has just the faintest hint of a charming yet ambiguous East Coast accent. Hi, how are you today? I'm Stacy Fortune. Up until two weeks ago, I was the picture of a strong, successful, independent urbanite woman. I had a mediocre career, an overpriced condo in downtown Toronto, and a hilarious story about how I empowered myself to blow gobs of money on stupid shit in the name of retail therapy after I gave my cheating fiancé the boot. Then I got diagnosed with three highly unpredictable and certainly inoperable brain tumors, which sporadically turned my limbs to jello, my eyes to kaleidoscopes, and my head into a world of hurt. Now I'm holed up in my mother's small and scruffy trailer on small and scruffy Cape Breton Island, holding out little hope that the doctors in this have-not hellhole can do much to stop me from morphing into a paralyzed bag of piss, drool, and babble before I unceremoniously croak. Hair, pants, and tone be damned. Let's just cut to the chase. Hi, I'm Stacy, but you can call me Crow. How about being nice to me? I'll be dead soon. A few pages in and I just blew the ending of this story. That's all right. It's painfully predictable anyway. I really should have just written, girl gets tumor, girl loses mind, girl dies, the end, on a sheet of loose leaf, slapped it in a damn duotang folder and been done with it. But that is not the style of a masochistic, narcissistic drama queen such as myself. Get comfy and grab the tissues, dear. This here is a proper Cape Breton tale of shame and woe grabs at the heartstrings and tugs. All the old dolls will click their tongues and say, yes, poor crow fortune, deathly ill with the tumors smack dab in the middle of her brains. What a sin, so young. What was she, 30 something? Makes you wonder, don't it? About them fortunes in the, you know. Because nobody will come right out and say it. It's always whispered every time something terrible happens to one of us. The, you know. The thing that makes us lunatics or criminals or both. The thing that cuts us down in the prime of our lives. The curse of the poor unfortunate fortunes. They say it goes back generations. I say it's a convenient cover for people who are prone to poor life choices, bad luck, and bouts of lunacy. Either way, there's a story here about me, about my people, about this place, and I need to be the one to tell it, if only to myself. Get this little life of mine down on paper while I still can. That's item number one on my bucket list. Or my fuck it list. Because fuck it, I'm dying, so I'll say and do whatever I want now. But first, I better get those towels out on the clothesline before Mama has a conniption fit. And so that's your introduction to Stacy Fortune, better known as Crow. Thanks so much for joining me today and I look forward to the day when we can celebrate together uh, the literary accomplishments of people in the Atlantic provinces with reckless abandon. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Thanks.